My dear friends, uh, we're all very blessed to come together tonight in the first night of this seven nights. Hanumanji Yagya. You know, Hanuman Swami, to Hindus, uh, he has endeared himself uh, in a very prominent and special place uh, in our hearts, in our devotion. And we shall see throughout the passage of these uh, seven nights of this Yagya, how the prominence of Hanumanji has been achieved, my dear friends. When he who is described as Ram Dut or the servant of Sri Ramchandra is even exalted and worshipped, my dear friends, in the same status and the same prominence as Bhagwan Sri Ramchandra himself. And so, my dear friends, we have ahead of us for the seven nights of this Yagya a wonderful journey throughout the pages of Ramcharitamanas. We join together firstly in Dhyan, in meditation, as we prepare ourselves to receive the Divine Charitra, the Divine Glories of Shri Hanuman Swami. And for this purpose, we sit most comfortably, we close our eyes and bring to our minds that most wondrous, beauteous form of Shri Pavan Putra Hanuman Swami. He bachadang bali, he mangal murati maruti nandan. Tonight, O Prabhu, as we come together in this beautiful Yagya Shalai, we do so with one common purpose, and that is surrender unto you our prema or bhakti, our love and devotion. Bless us this night to the successful completion of our devotions here this evening. And your divine blessings enable us to receive and to understand the wonderful lessons contained in the pages of Ram Charitramanas. And so as we focus our thoughts and energies on that most benevolent form of Shri Pavan Putra Hanuman Swami, we join together in Dhyan and meditation as we stabilize our thoughts and energies. Om Om Hari Om Om Shri Ganesha Namaha Shri Saraswati Namaha Shri Guru Charana Kamale Bhyo Namo Namaha Om Pranamai Shirsha Devam Gauri Putram Vinayakam भक्त वासम स्मरे नित्यम आयु काम अरित सिद्धये विद्यारम है विवाह चा प्रवेश निर्गमित था संग्रामे संकते चैव विघन तस्य न जायते Om Shweta Paramasanam Devim Shweta Pushpo Pasho Bhinim Shweta Mubardharam Nityam Shweta Gandhanule Panam Dhyana Moolam Gurur Murti Pooja Moolam Gurur Param Mantra Moolam Guru Vakyam Moksha Moolam Guru Param Adhyanta Rehte Devi Adi Shakti Maheshwari Yoga Jai Yoga Sambhote Mahalakshmi Namastute 
ओम भद्रकाली नमो नित्यम सर्वे शक्ति स्वरूपिनी जगत्स्थिते जगन माता नारायणी नमस्तुते नागेन्द्रहाराय त्रिलोचनाय भस्मांगरागाय महेश्वराय नित्याय शुद्धाय दिगंबराय तस्मै नकाराय नमः शिवाय मनुजवं मारुत तुल्य बेगम जितेन्द्रियम बुद्धि मतां वरिष्ठम वातात्मजम वानरयुत मुख्यम श्रीराम दूतम शरणम प्रबद्धे नीलाम भुजम शामल को मलांगम सीता समारु पतिबाम भाग्यम पानु महासायक चारु चापम नमामि रामम रघुवंशनाथम या देवी सर्वभूतेशु दुर्गा रूपे न संस्थित नमस्तस्ये 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 नमो नमः या देवी सर्वभूतेशु शक्ति रूपे न संस्थित नमस्तस्ये 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 नमो नमः या देवी सर्वभूतेशु मात्री रूपे न संस्थित नमस्तस्ये 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 नमो नमः ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम Hanuman Ji has given to us the beautiful Hanuman Chalisa, a very powerful instrument of glorification, my dear friends. To understand the advent and the greatness of Hanuman Swami, we have to go back to the origin, my dear friends, at the time of Hanuman Ji Avatar. We have to understand who were his parents and what special lives that they lived, and what special vardhan that they asked for to have a son, such as Hanumanji. If you want to, want to understand, you know, each person, any person here, and their origin, and who they are, we must trace to your parents as well. You know, we must understand what type of parents brought forth into this world a wonderful child, a wonderful devotee that you know your presence here tonight, my dear friends, is an indication, you know, of who you are and the type of devotion that you possess. And so in understanding Hanumanji's great legacy, we are going to start tonight, my dear friends, in Kishkinda Kand of Ram Charitramanas, where Tulsi Dasu describes his father his earthly father and his earthly mother and what type of devotion that they possessed, what Vardhan they had requested, my dear friends, so that Hanumanji manifested in their home as a son. Kaha Rikshapati Sunu Hanumana Kachu Prasadhi Rahevu Balavana Pavantane Bal Pavan Samana Budhi Vivek Vigyan Nidhana we're looking at Keshari, my dear friends, the earthly father of Hanuman Swami. Keshari was the king of the Himalayan province, the Himalayan Parvat in India at that point in time. One day he was walking along the slopes of the Himalayan mountain and he saw in a forested, serene, quiet place, Durvasa Muni was seated. His eyes were closed and he was performing tapasya. He was worshipping Bhagwan Vishnu. Keshari stood for a moment, you know, 
And he admired that great and holy and powerful sage, Durvasa Muni, as he sat there in quiet contemplation, engaged in his devotion to Bhagwan. Suddenly, the serenity of the morning and that which Keshidi was admiring so much, seeing this Rishi so peaceful, contemplating upon Bhagwan, suddenly that quietness was shattered as a herd of wild elephants burst through the growth of the forest trees. And my dear friends, they were headed in the direction of Durvasa Muni, who was still seated there, engaged in his devotion. Now, the great Rishis and Munis, my dear friends, when they would sit in puja and performing their tapasya and so on, their devotion was so intense and so powerful that that task aside that you had you know, in the welcoming with the Ramlila uh, members and so on. Even if you play that task aside next to them, it still would not disturb them. You and I, our devotion, our concentration, our at attention, my dear friends, is very easily disturbed. You know, someone just pass on the side and we lose our thought, you know. The great Rishis and Munis, my dear friends, would sit for days on end you know, and they would engage in their devotion to Bhagwan. And so here it is, these elephants are thundering now towards uh, this great and powerful Rishi, Durvasa Muni. But all the sounds, my dear friends, that they're producing, you know, the elephants would trumpet loudly as they run. When they would run, my dear friends, remember these are very heavy animals. They would virtually shake the ground, you know, their footsteps are very powerful and very thunderous. If you were walking there, you would create a noise with your footsteps. And of course, we are not, we are perhaps not even one-tenth of the weight of these great and powerful animals. So you can imagine, my dear friends, the loud commotion that they are creating as they are trumpeting loudly and thundering towards Durvasa Muni. Keshari was shocked, you know. He was taken aback, for he saw imminent death for Durvasa Muni. How was he to alert Durvasa Muni? As even if he shouted, my dear friends, the sound of his voice could not cover the tremendous noise of this herd of wild elephants. And so he did the unthinkable. Perhaps which no one else would think of doing, my dear friends, he ran directly in the path of these elephants. That is like you see a big truck coming down the road and you run in front of the truck. The elephants might weigh, I don't know, one or two or three tons. These are very mighty and powerful animals. But Keshari, my dear friends, would not think or could not think of simply standing there and seeing this holy sage engage in puja, being trampled to death by these uh, elephants. He preferred, my dear friends, to sacrifice himself than to lose uh, this great and powerful Rishi Durvasa Muni. Needless to say, my dear friends, uh, Keshari was severely injured. He managed to divert the course of these elephants who were headed directly to Durvasa Muni. He managed to save the life of Durvasa Muni. But in the process, my dear friends, he was severely injured. He suffered, you know, a broken limbs and so on. Durvasa Muni by this time had awakened from that deep state of meditation that he was engaged in. And when he saw, you know, the courage, the selflessness of Durvasa Muni, he was moved, you know, he saw the greatness of Keshari. Durvasa Muni was moved when he saw this type of dedication and this type of selflessness. And so he said to him, O Keshari, how can I ever repay you? What can I do to thank you? Ask for whatever you desire, whatever Vardhan, whatever wish, O Keshari, that you desire, I will fulfill this desire of yours certainly to do. And so Keshari said to him, O Durvasa Muni, I desire only one thing, to have a son who would be as strong and as powerful as the wind. Pavan Devuta. Bless my son, whenever he would be born, that he would possess the strength and the power 
of the wind. So be it, Eva must too. I give you this Vardhan. Indeed, in due course of time, a son would be born to you who would possess the power and the strength of Pavan Devuta. And so this is why, you know, he is referred to as Pavan Putra. Because he possesses the strength and power of Pavan Devuta. This is why in Hanuman Chalisa, we started off, you know, by singing Hanuman Chalisa. One part of Hanuman Chalisa also refers to him as Keshari Nandan. Of course, because Keshari has asked of this powerful boon from Durvasa Muni. Before we go on to look at his mother, let us look at the selflessness of Keshari. My dear friends, let us look at his willingness to sacrifice himself for the safety and protection of Durvasa Muni. Durvasa Muni here represents Dharma. We are all servants of Sanatan Dharma. We are all the protectors of Sanatan Dharma. Not that any one of us would be called upon to give our life or to sacrifice our life for Sanatan Dharma. But we are certainly called upon, my dear friends, to sacrifice our time and our energy for the propagation of Sanatan Dharma. So we are the sevak or the servants, the soldiers of Sanatan Dharma. And my dear friends, the yagya here, your mandir here, is the avenue, the, the, the manner, the medium that we are required to sacrifice our time, our energy, our efforts, my dear friends, in the propagation of dharma. Here we see a wonderful lesson from Keshadi in selflessness. We live in a world, you know, where we hear more, more about selfishness rather than people being selfless. And more and more, my dear friends, you know, in our society, in our villages, in our communities, in our dharma, we need that act of being selfless, you know, in order to preserve our villages, our communities, our mandir, even our families. My dear friends, we need to be selfless, to put others ahead of ourselves. And when we can put others ahead of ourselves and cater for the needs of others, my dear friends, ahead of ourselves, then of course we are developing a selfless village, a selfless community, and a selfless nation. But increasingly we are seeing we are becoming a very selfish nation, a very selfish people where we think of ourselves only, my dear friends, and those, you know, who are vulnerable around us, my dear friends, we are seeing increasingly that these individuals are slipping through the cracks in society, you know, because, you know, those who are supposed to be the helping hands and the helpful hands, my dear friends, those hands are disappearing. And so, Keshari, my dear friends, in our kata this evening, teaches us that wonderful and important lesson, you know, of the willingness to sacrifice and that act of selflessness in the preservation of dharma. And as he did, of course, to safeguard the life of this vulnerable Rishi. Let us go to this next show of ayas, Tulsidashi continues to describe to us this wonderful kata. So we have seen the father, the earthly father of Hanumanji, Keshari. And how the desire of Keshari to have this child, to have this son, this Vardhan has been granted on to him by Durvasa Muni. And you know, those who are desirous of becoming parents. It is important to understand that, you know, praying for the blessing of a child who would be virtuous, who would be respectable, who would be honorable, is very important. Here, he was given the option, ask for anything you desire. And you know, most people given that option may begin to think, you know, one million, two million, three million, how much money should I ask for? 
Look at the train of thought of Keshadi, my dear friends. He's asking for the blessing of a child who would be strong and powerful as the wind, Pavan Devta. Let us see what the mother will ask for. Anjani Maya, we are looking at the life also of Anjani Maya, the earthly mother of Hanuman Swami. Nirakita hidishi sakal sayani, chalene charan sithil bhayamani. Tata tori te hi ban kar raja, ke hari naam tej bal chaja. Anjani, in her purva janam, was actually an apsara. An apsara is a celestial being. Her name was Punji Kashthala. She lived in Brahmalok. And you see in tracing, my dear friends, with us too, to understand who we are today, we have to trace back to the Purva Janam. You know, who we were in the Purva Janam, Lord Krishna had said to Arjuna, O oh Arjuna, there will never come a time when you will not be here. You are here now, but you were here before in the Purva Janam. And your time would expire, O Arjuna, and you would have to re-enter into this Avagaman, into the cycle of birth and death. The very same thing happens, my dear friends, to all of us. This is applicable to all of us, that we are here now. But we too, this is not the first time we are here. We too were here in the Purvachanam, in the previous birth. And our time would also expire, my dear friends. And we too would have to leave this world and also re-enter. Where and how? And under what circumstances depends on our karma and what we do now. So we shall find out what Anjani did to lose her heavenly status in Brahmalok as an apsada and to be reborn, my dear friends, in this earthly planet, Mrityulok. So she has gone from Brahmalok to Mrityulok. So we're looking at her life as that apsada. She's a divine dancer, my dear friends, in the abode of Lord Brahma. So one day, Angira Rishi visited Brahmalok. And Lord Brahma was very happy, you know, to receive Angira Rishi. And as part of the welcoming ceremony for Angira Rishi, Punji Kashthala, who was Anjani in her previous birth, was invited to perform a welcoming dance to Angira Rishi. So, all the musicians and so on were prepared and the music started to play and she, Punji Kashthala, began to dance, my dear friends. But the moment she started to dance, Angira Rishi closed his eyes. And for the duration of her performance, his eyes remained closed. So in other words, he did not even see one moment of the dance. Nevertheless, when that dance had come to an end, Narad Muni, who was also there, asked, O Angira Rishi, tell me, how did you enjoy this wonderful dance? And he says, my eyes were closed, I did not see the dance. For I am not interested, O Narad Muni, in such forms of entertainment and so on. Whilst that dance was taking place, my eyes were closed and I was meditating on the Supreme Paramatma, Sri Krishna Bhagwan. As such, I did not see the dance. I cannot comment on whether the dance was good or not good. But what of the dancer? She became upset. She became angry. You know, Narad Muni took his explanation that he was not interested in the dance and he had nothing further to say. But for the dancer, Punji Kashthala, put, who put all her effort, you know, into this dance to welcome Angira Rishi. She was very upset, my dear friends, with the statement of Angira Rishi. And she said to him that you, 
O Angira, do not possess the fine taste, you know, to appreciate this divine art form of this dance that I have rendered. You do not have the knowledge, O Angira, to understand and to appreciate what I have done. No wonder you close your eyes, being unable to appreciate such fine art of this dance that I have rendered. Angira Muni became upset, my dear friends, because of this insult, you know, saying to him who is so knowledgeable that you do not possess knowledge, saying to him who is so respectable that you cannot appreciate this fine art form that I have rendered for you here. He became upset, my dear friends, because of what she had said. And he said to her, I pronounce this shrap upon you that you will lose your celestial form as an apsada. You will be reborn as a female vanar. And you will lose your place in Brahmalok and you will now take birth in Mrityulok. This is the shrap, my dear friends, that was pronounced upon Punji Kastala. Is it possible, my dear friends, that we can lose this form and devolve into a lower form of life? The answer is yes. We often say, Chau Ra Silak Yoni, 8,400,000 species of life. Remember, this human form is a most highly evolved form. This human form is designed to perform bhakti, devotion. Bade bhagya manushatana pawa. It is designed as an instrument to attain moksha or salvation. But when we use it or misuse it, my dear friends, only for sensual gratification and satisfaction, and we do not use it for the purpose of bhakti or devotion, my dear friends, then it is quite possible that we lose this manushadir, this human form. Here we are seeing, here we are seeing. Punji Kashtala, about to lose the Apsada form, that celestial form that she possessed. And in the, in the words of Angira Muni, to be reborn in the form of the Vanar. मत कर तू अभिमान रे बंदे जूती तेरी शान रे मत कर तू अभिमान After the words spoken to her by Angira Muni took effect my dear friends, then she came to her senses. Matakara to Abhiman is described in this bhajan that Abhiman makes us blind. It prevents us from fully understanding sometimes, my dear friends, what we do, our behavior, the words we speak, our mannerisms, and how it affects those around us. Sure, she's a good dancer. She's an excellent dancer. But your excellence in what you do should not cause you to ridicule another, to insult another, or to disrespect another. You know, every single person have a certain talent, a certain skill in a particular area of life. And by all means, my dear friends, you have trained hard, you have worked hard to earn that certificate, that talent. In whatever field of life that you have chosen. The behavior, the outburst of Punji Kashtala towards Angira Rishi, my dear friends, is something that we see amongst us as well. That if we feel that we are not given credit, when credit is due, recognition, when it should be given, then sometimes, my dear friends, we also tend 
to become upset and angry as she had done. We too tend to speak to others harshly as she had done to Angira Rishi. Angira Rishi fought back with his words. Sometimes in today's society, people actually fight back. Physically, they fight back. They respond sometimes with violence. And you know, we live in a culture of violence now. Sometimes they respond with a gun. We have so many shootings and so on taking place around us. We must be very mindful, my dear friends, how we speak. The tone with which we speak. The words that we use. We try to not be confrontational, you know, when we speak to others. Not to denigrate and disrespect others through our words and through our behavior and so on. So she, my dear friends, when these words, when the shrap has now been pronounced upon her by Angira Rishi, now she comes to her senses and now begins to seek the forgiveness of Angira Rishi. So my dear friends, immediately hearing the shrap was about to take effect upon her, she sought the forgiveness of Angira Rishi. She bowed to his feet. O holy sage, Shama Karo, forgive me for my transgression, for insulting you, for speaking to you in this manner. And so he says to her, the spoken word cannot be taken back. Whatever I have said, it must take effect. But I give to you this Vardhan now. So first he gave Shrap, now he gives Vardhan. I give to you this Vardhan that you will give birth in the form of this Vanar to none other than Pavan Putra Hanuman Swami. And when you give birth to Pavan Putra Hanumanji, you would be redeemed of your sin. And once again, you would return to your heavenly abode in Brahmalok and take your place once more amongst the Apsadas in Brahmalok. So always, my dear friends, Bhagwan gives us an opportunity to redeem ourselves. Whatever transgressions we make, Bhagwan gives us that avenue to redeem ourselves, you know, of whatever sins and bad karma and so on that we perform. And so, her chance, my dear friends, was to this Vardhan that was now given to her, that she would become the earthly mother of Hanuman Swami. So she will become the consort, the companion of Keshari. Keshari who was valiant, who was courageous, who was prepared, prepared to sacrifice his life to save the holy sage Durvasa Muni. So we shall see now how his Vardhan, remember he wanted to have a son as strong, as powerful as the wind. How his Vardhan, my dear friends, combined with the Vardhan of Anjani Maya brings forth, brings into being Sri Hanuman Swami. So my dear friends, Anjani Maya now is reborn in the form of a female Vanad. She eventually becomes married to Keshari. Keshari and Anjani, my dear friends, from the initial stage of their marriage began to worship Lord Shiva. They worshipped Lord Shiva, they prayed for the blessings of Shankar Bhagwan for the gift of a son. So if you go back to Hanuman Chalisa, Shankar Suvan Keshari Nanda. Right? So there are so many uh, factors, my dear friends, that contributed to Hanumanji Avatar. So, and again, you know, those who are desirous, of becoming parents, it is recommended that you know, even before the child is actually conceived, when you perform your puja, when you make your offerings, you, you perform 
devotion to Bhagwan, you pray for the gift of that child. And here we are seeing, my dear friends, the importance of Shiv worship, worship to Bhagwan Shankar, that these parents, parents to be Anjani and Keshari, are praying for the blessings of Sadashiv Bhagwan. My dear friends, their devotion to Lord Shiva yielded great benefit and results for he also gave Vardhan to them that he would manifest as part of his 11th Rudra. So Hanumanji is a part manifestation of Shankar Bhagavan in their home to fulfill this Vardhan that is secure. So my dear friends, Hanumanji's blessings therefore came from Shankar Bhagwan as well. There's a reason, you know, that he had to take the Vanar Roop. Vanar literally translates into monkey. But that word Vanar is a compound word. Nar actually means human. You know, when you speak of uh, Narayan, the name of Lord Vishnu, that too is a compound word. Nar, of course, means human in that uh, word Narayan. And Ayan means the abode of. Narayan literally translates into the abode of humanity. But we examine in the word Vanar. Vanar is also a compound word. So Nar means human and Va means near to or close to. So the word Vanar, my dear friends, literally translates into close or near to being human. Hence the word Vanar. Kapi means monkey. So the word Vanar, my dear friends, and Kapi are used alternatively. So it suggests to us that Hanumanji is not really Kapi or monkey. He is Vanar or close to being human. So there's a distinction there that sometimes people literally translate the form of Hanuman Swami into that of Kapi or monkey, but he is not. He is Vanar, which is entirely different, my dear friends, from the name Kapi. For he, Hanumanji, was equipped with great speech, great intelligence and immense power, which the Kapi, the ordinary Kapi or monkey, does not possess. So there's a distinction that sometimes it is mistakenly said he is, you know, kapi or monkey. But my dear friends, correctly, we should say he is vanad. And of course, the name itself, vanad, when you understand what it means, tells us, my dear friends, how he was able to possess all of this immense power and so on. So there's a reason, you know, that um, Shankar Bhagwan manifested in this Vanar Roop. You know, when Ram Avatar was about to take place, Lord Brahma had given the directive to the Devatas and he had said to them, assuming the form of the Vanar and the Bhalu, you would accompany the Lord Sri Ramchandra on his mission on earth. And so many of the Devatas at that time had taken various manifestations, including Shankar Bhagwan. But it is upon the Shrap that Narad Muni had once pronounced upon Lord Vishnu. Now you see how many factors, my dear friends, contribute to Hanuman Swami and why he took this particular Vanad Roop. That Narad Muni had once pronounced a shrap on Bhagwan Vishnu that he would one time lose his companion and someone in this Vanad Roop would have to come to his assistance. This had occurred when Narad Muni had desired to become married to Princess Vishramohini. He had seen the beautiful Princess Vishramohini and he wanted to become married to her. And he learned that the father of Princess Vishramohini, the king, was getting prepared to perform a very unusual ceremony. All the eligible princes would be invited and the princess would simply garland that prince that she liked the most. Simple as that. And he wanted to be the chosen prince. But he wanted a little help from Lord Vishnu. 
And so he goes to Bhagwan Vishnu Prabhu, this is my desire, I want to become the chosen companion of Princess, Princess Vishra Mohini. But I want you to bless me, my Lord, so that I will be the most handsome. In other words, he's saying he's not so handsome. Bless me with the most handsome face of any prince alive so that I will be the chosen one. And you know, Narad, uh, Vishnu Bhagwan is thinking that Narad is such a great devotee, a great bhakta. If you were to become married and have a dulahin and have children and so on, this would interrupt his devotion. So he says, Narad, I will bless you with that which is best for you. Sometimes what is best for us and what is our heart's desire could be two different things. Narad, however, understood this to mean that Bhagavan Vishnu was going to bless him with that face of the handsome prince. And so he went back to that kingdom. And you know, the king had arranged that ceremony where all the princes were invited. And Narad Muni sat amongst all the princes. And the princess Vishwamohini came out with garland in hand. And she passed Narad Muni straight and she garlanded another prince. And he was taken aback. He was so confident, you know, that he was the most handsome of all who were gathered there that he said aloud, don't you see that I am the most handsome here? And they laughed at him and said, now that go and look at your reflection. And when he looked at his reflection, he saw that he had the face of a vanad instead of the face of that handsome prince. And this is where he had pronounced a shrap on Lord Vishnu. My Lord, one day your companion would be separated from you and someone in this same Vana Roop would have to come to your assistance. This is why, my dear friends, Lord Shiva took this form of the Vana as Hanuman Swami, my dear friends, to come to the um, assistance of Sri Ramchandra, of course, when Devi Sita Mata would have been separated from him. Let us go to this Closing Doha. Lagat Bhajra Mahakati So it is described to us here in the Purnima day in the month of Chaitra. Hanuman Swami in the morning time, my dear friends, when all the nakshatra and rasi were favorable. Remember Hanuman Jayanti, my dear friends, always occurs in that month of Chaitra, which corresponds to March, April in the English calendar. And of course, the Purnima, of course, is the full moon. So the Hanuman Jayanti always occurs on the full moon day in that uh, month of Chaitra. So in the morning time, my dear friends, uh, Shub Nakshatra, Shub Rasi, Hanumanji took manifestation in the home of Anjani and Keshari. Prem se boliye Shri Pavan Putra Hanuman ki. And of course, with the birth of any child, there was great celebration, there was great rejoicing in that home of uh, uh, Keshari and Anjani Maya, my dear friends. Uh, members of the entire kingdom would have come to the home of Keshari. Remember that that palace into which he was born, Keshari being the king of the Himalayan regions. 
And so my dear friends, this is the manner in which Hanumanji avatar took place and the circumstances surrounding his avatar as he manifested to his earthly parents Anjani Maya and Kishri.